All right, everyone. The other day there was a an Islamic extremist incident down in Texas, a terrorist attack, of course, of uh, uh, Malik Faisal Akram taking hostages, Jewish ones, so it's a no-brainer, uh, in a synagogue down in Texas and gets his head blown off. Thankfully, there were no other casualties. Just the perp was the one that died. We, we dodged a bullet in the metaphoric and literal sense there. Um, can I ask you something? Link in the description archive, of course, by the way, about this story. Um, did this seem to be a prevalent feature of the Trump administration? That's interesting, because I remember him as the president who oversaw the literal crushing of ISIS out of most of the world, to the point where now there are a few uh, groups within Afghanistan and Libya, but they've devolved into what Obama initially called them, which is the JV team. I don't even know if they're junior varsity at this point. It's more like a wiffle ball tournament among four-year-olds, uh, which is great. We had relative peace under Trump. No new wars, not a lot of terrorist attacks, at least in the United States. And it's like, well, there are going to be attacks in other countries. We can't always stop them. It didn't happen domestically to any great uh, extent. Happened a lot under Obama because of his poor leadership. And now it's begun under Biden, too, which is exactly why the FBI, when it initially reported on this, they knew who the perp was. They knew that he was explicitly, because he said so, interested in the release of an Islamic terrorist. And he's taking a synagogue uh, hostage, a bunch of Jews in a synagogue. Unreasonable person putting two and two together would see the connection between these things and say, well, this is fairly clearly Islamic extremism. The FBI initially said, we have no evidence that that's the case. No, it's just, uh, we don't know what was motivating the attempted shooter. We have no clue whatsoever. And not like that Christchurch guy. We knew that on day one, but here we're not we're not entirely sure. Hmm, Malik, uh, he's calling for the release of an Islamic extremist, and taking a synagogue hostage, and swearing up and down all of this and all of that. I have no clue what he's up about. He's just mentally ill. He's just a mentally ill person. No, he's not. He was an Islamic terrorist. Uh, we should call it what it is, be honest, number one. And number two... Can we ponder for a moment whether having a weak, weak on crime, leadership-less administration, an asterisk administration in D.C. is causing the same effect for this kind of thing as it is with general crime, which is skyrocketing, border crossings, which have skyrocketed, uh, and so forth? The problem with the Biden administration at this point is not even the sum and substance of actual policy. We do have a lot of deportations going on at the border. But people don't perceive of it as a closed border. They perceive of it as being as open as a goddamn block of thinly cut Swiss cheese. It's not that we have, outside of a few major cities with far left socialists running them, it's not that we actually don't prosecute people for significant crimes. It's that people feel that they'll get away with it. And unfortunately, when you have a surge in crime, there are so many, it's hard to investigate them all, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not that Joe Biden has completely washed his hands of attempting to stop terrorism. It's that the enemies are emboldened by the fact that they know that he's out to lunch and that he's weak and that he'll do a half-assed job at the job he, when he even tries to do it. It's just like the economy. Part of the economic damage is due to Biden's policies. The inflationary stimulus so-called that he passed, the now new inflation numbers in a few months will begin to be affected by the infrastructure payoff. Um, certainly business closures and stuff. That, that he, I mean, he doesn't do that himself, but he encourages it to be done. Some of that's causing economic damage. Another bit of damage is that investment and, and spending on things that would grow the economy slacks off when people have no confidence in the president because he is one of the main arbiters of fiscal policy. He puts Yellen back in, in power and so forth. Uh, you've got inflation. At a moment's notice, there might be more lockdowns. Why the hell would you want to grow your business? You'd go bankrupt. And so everything Biden's doing that's holding people back, a lot of it is just optics. You can expect more of this. Just like we have more crime, more inflation, more border crossings, more everything. Every aspect of the Biden presidency is an abysmal and abject failure. And part of it is literally nothing more than optics, what people perceive of. Not what it actually is. Optics matters, especially within diplomacy. Biden goes overseas. The U.S. is taking up a hard line on Russia. But he meets with Putin and he has a shit-eating grin and poops himself and stuff. Nobody's going to take him seriously. Oh, well, the main man who has to call the military shots is a vegetable. Eh, fuck it. We'll steamroll Kiev within a week. And they probably will. 
They probably would have the ability to do so. Apparently there are now cyber attacks on Ukrainian government servers and shit. Uh, they don't fear Biden. <laughs> they don't give a shit about what the U.S. policy is towards Taiwan or anything because Biden's a miscreant. He should resign. He no longer has any form of mandate. Even his own party members are splitting with him. Uh, but terrorism's back on the menu. Really nice. Yeah, really neat. Let's go, Brandon. How, how lovely. We had suppressed all these groups effectively, partially because Trump didn't stick his cock in a beehive and constantly arm Islamo-fascists like the FSA in Syria, causing a power vacuum that was exploited by ISIS. He stopped doing that, and all of a sudden, all these Iranians and Syrians wiped the floor with ISIS because they had better weapons and better logistics. <laughs> because, because they were fighting on their own turf, by and large, with uh, Russian air support. And it took care of the problem. You'll see it rear its head. Biden, if he takes a leaf out of Obama's playbook, which nine times out of ten he does, will probably go back to arming the FSA, re-destabilize Syria. We'll probably see a re-destabilization of multiple Middle East countries because we'll have another attempted Arab Spring. Maybe Egypt gets overthrown. All of a sudden, Al-Qaeda takes root. Afghanistan's already been fucked up. They're run by the Taliban. The Taliban has no problem with Al-Qaeda. They have a problem with ISIS because they chew the hearts out of people while they're still alive, but they don't care about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda are their buddies. And we gave them all sorts of weapons. Yeah, well, what a wonderful opening to the asterisk administration. I'm sure this is an isolated incident and it'll never happen again. I thought that the most abysmal take, though, was by the legacy media. You know, the uh, CNNs and, and Washington Post of the world. Well, we're worried that this will cause a, a resurgence of Islamophobia. Who gives a goddamn shit if people are questioning Islam? This dude was threatening to kill people and is, and is a literal terrorist. Which one is worse, the terrorist attack that happens or people's knee-jerk reaction thereafter? Oh my God, they might be slightly bigoted. Who cares? They're not shooting anyone. They didn't take a bunch of people hostage in a place of worship and demand the release of a criminal, did they? They didn't kill. They didn't have to get their head blown off because they were holding a gun to people's uh, uh, backs. I, I would say, you know, fuck uh, Malik Akram and fuck Joe Biden and fuck the legacy media for making excuses about the whole thing. This is the meaning of yellow journalism, by the way. The wagon circling is so sheer. Biden must be so goddamn abjectly weak to have to rely upon these morons to constantly circle wagons around every single issue. There is not one win in the entire Biden admin. We find out the other day, he spent fully a quarter of his entire first year in Delaware. He has taken more vacation days than the last four administrations combined in any single year. Just to be clear about how lazy and stupid Joe Biden is, this is just the icing on the goddamn cake. Biden says, oh, it was terrorism. Use the term Islamic extremism. Biden challenged you to do so over and over again. He used to challenge Hillary, and she failed and never did. There was a reason why Trump got elected in 2016, Joe. You're going to find that out come 2024 if you're still not a, so much of a vegetable you're incapable of walking and therefore campaigning. That's about all. Peace out.